Tonight's Soul Knowledge takes a closer look at Nike Air and Nike Air Max. This is not about the air up there, but rather the air beneath. So inhale, exhale, and welcome to it. Welcome to Soul Knowledge, the home of the sneaker story and the home of sports culture insights. I'm your host Bernie Wickham and I am the sneaker evangelist. Tonight's story on Nike Air starts with a guy by the name of Marion Frank Rudy, an aerospace engineer working at NASA who develops these urethane bags which have been inflated with air. And his claim is that these little cushions prevent injury and make running a lot easier. He approaches several footwear companies in the United States, all of which refuse him, largely because it would probably propose re-engineering the entire process of making footwear. So Nike was warm to the principle of the cushioning of, of air. And what Frank Rudy then does is he takes a pair of Nike shoes, removes the sock liner, shoves in an air cushion underneath it, and lets the CEO go for about a 15 minute run. And as the CEO returns, he says, look Frank, you don't know much about footwear. These shoes are killing me. But there's something in the feel of these shoes that I like. Let's investigate it a bit further. Now Nike and Frank spend a lot of time re-engineering midsoles with foam and inserting air inside of it. In creating a few prototypes, they give it to runners running the Honolulu Marathon. These guys had never understood air before. They just got these new shoes and they started running in them. When it came to the end of the race, the shoes actually fell apart. Midsoles started tearing, uppers split from midsoles. The shoe actually fell apart. But none of these runners were willing to actually give the sneakers back to Nike after the run. They said they'd never experienced such a ride before and they would rather duct tape the shoes together so that they could feel it one more time. They knew at that point in time that they were onto a proper recipe for success. And Nike then further goes back to the drawing board to re-engineer the idea. The first shoe to commercially contain an air cushion was the 1979 release of the Air Tailwind. If you have a look at the images of the air cushion, you can see that it is not too different from what I'm holding right now. These cushions are referred to as encapsulated air because they would sit completely hidden within a midsole. Do you remember my episodes on midsoles? This would be a typically a compression molded EVA midsole completely hiding this over here. And when you have a look at the tailwind, it doesn't look like it's different from any other running shoe at that point in time. But the moment consumers fit their shoe on, did they feel that something was different about it? The cushioning was just unbelievable. And compared that to normal EVA films at that point in time, the shoe went from feeling okay to absolutely incredible with this new cushioning. And because of that, Nike dominated the cushioning space in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and even the noughties. And right now, Nike has got a vast array of cushioning within its portfolio, but still goes to Nike Air as its stalwart of delivering performance in cushioning. Consider this, from the year 1979 when the Air Tailwind comes out, to the year 1987 when the Air Max 1 comes out, the only type of cushioning available was the encapsulated air. In other words, in that whole period of time, consumers never actually saw what this looked like. That all changed one day when Tinker Hatfield goes to visit Paris and sees the George Pompidou Center for the first time. Now the Air Max 1 was actually inspired by the George Pompidou Center. And what makes the George Pompidou Center so unique is that all of the elements that are normally hidden within the construction of a traditional building, this time is on the outside of the building. So imagine all of the valves that are normally hidden, all of the air conditioning, everything that should be hidden is now on the outside. And as a matter of fact, these components are painted bright colors and are made even more visible than normal. And when Tinker looks at this building, he thinks, you know, wouldn't it be amazing if our technology, the Nike Air technology that has been so hidden, is actually being brought to the outside of the shoe and made visible. And it was that thinking that sparked up the idea of making Air visible, and in this case, the Max Air 
window that you can see visible in the midsole. Also quite interesting is that the colors used in the George Pompidou Center, the grays and the reds, have also pulled through in the design inspiration of the Air Max 1. If you see Tinker's original sketches for the Air Max 1, you would notice that it doesn't particularly look exactly as the final product does in my hand. And as the years had gone by and Nike had enjoyed the success of the Air Max 1, they had a look back at those sketches and decide to launch the actual shoe based on the way Tinker had initially conceptualized it. This shoe was then released under the name Air Max Zero. A couple of things to keep in mind when it comes to Nike Air is that when Nike names a shoe, they will put the word Air within the name of that shoe so that you could know that it contains the Air technology. In this case, for example, the box reads Air Max One Supreme. And sometimes if the box doesn't say it, the product itself will say Air Max. And in this case, this is the Air Max One Supreme. If you guys would recall the Air Safari story, this would make even more sense. There are some exceptions to this rule regarding the naming convention, but there are so few of them that actually contain Air, but the name does not say so, that it's not particularly worth highlighting. But a general rule to go by is that if it says Air, it's got Air in it. Also, regarding the term Max Air, Max Air can only be given to a product that contains a visible Air cushion. So whether it be visible in the rear or the forefoot of the shoe, visible A equals max A or maximum A. And in this example, this is the Air Max 1 Premium TW Quick Strike. So because the Air Max 1 launched on the 26th of March 1987, the 26th of March has subsequently become Air Max Day. And every single year on Air Max Day, Nike launches a very special version of the Air Max One. 2019 is actually the exception, but in my opinion, the best shoe to launch for Air Max on Air Max Day is the Air Max Masters. What a masterpiece. I want to conclude by sharing that Nike had always had a vision of replacing a full foam midsole with Air. This was first achieved with this shoe in the year 2006 and this is the Air Max 360. You're not only looking at the original colorway, you are actually looking at the original shoe. So um, have a look at this a little bit closely. Even the year 2006 has been laser etched onto that upper and it is truly a landmark within Nike's Air history. Now, for you Air fanatics out there that have just watched this episode, I'm sure many of you would say, but Bernie, there's just so much of Air that you have not even touched on within this episode. I want to say that yes, I am aware of that, but the theme of Air will continue through other sneakers as I'm discussing within this season and beyond. And with that being said, I'd like to thank Nike South Africa for making these Air cushions available to Soul Knowledge. It's always very helpful to have the true components that make up these shoes and it's really just special to get some great hands on with these pieces. So thank you very much for that. Guys, for sticking around for yet another episode, you've made it very special. Thank you for watching. A lot of love.